Hello boys and girls. Well, uh, this is last night at nine o'clock and as you can see the nippy cold weather certainly didn't put off our customers and yeah they came into the brew shed and obviously enjoyed an evening in small groups uh, some of them up to six these are my mates sat here the old boys from camera the old boys we've got Gilly Ralph uh, Brian Kev don't know that fella though um, that's what we want to see though look at all those pints of real ale on the side there the boys but as you can see uh, we've just had somebody get up from this table so it has been busy uh, oh is he back so I'm very pleased to see people enjoying the Brucia beer garden on day one and at such a late hour too it's put a smile on my face anyway that everybody's flocked back great news isn't it anyway let's carry on with the vlog good morning ladies and gents here is the aftermath looks pretty good doesn't it the occasional dirty mask on the floor uh, so yeah I'm sure you spotted the scenes last night uh, of a busy beer garden which was a good thing I see there are some small tables outside as well that's probably convenient I was thinking about that today because we can seat singles and couples without taking up a massive table like that with a little bit of rearranging of the space that we have but that aside isn't it a glorious morning so yeah it's just after eight o'clock here and uh, I'm looking forward to going in and seeing what we took last night uh, I left yesterday at around five o'clock ish so uh, Stuart took over the reins as he does and ran the pub until closing I'm not sure what time we closed but I can go and have a look but I'll be curious to see if it was a successful night and indeed if it was profitable because if not well there ain't much point in us doing it is there but I'm sure it was considering the amount of support that we had so let's go in and have a look it's absolutely wonderful out here. A little bit of a nip in the air, but I'm not in the sunshine yet. You know, I could get myself set up with an egg cob, an egg butty, and a cup of tea and sit here for half an hour just taking in that view. But I must pull myself away. I must pull myself off. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, let's go inside anyway and have a look how we did. So the vacant gesture is tipped, as is the proof of concept, which indicates to me they were the big sellers of the evening, which is always a good thing. I would imagine that this, oh God, that's gonna go. That's gone, in fact, and that seems like it's gone as well. But I reckon we've sold in total, what do you say, uh, so about 65 pints, 70 pints in each one of usable beer. Two of them gone, plus whatever else we sold of the other beers. Anyway, that's the beer side of things. Let's go upstairs and have a look at the financials. Here we go. I don't think Stuart cashed up last night. I think he was probably tired and he went straight home. So, uh, I'm going to have to take a little bit of a wild guess on things but oh no we didn't make anything that's terrible news <laughs> but yeah let me find the cashing up sheet and everything and we'll come back and we'll have a little chat about it oh looks oh looks tip top in here Is that door shut properly 
Yeah, that's a relief. Right, let's go and check it out. So, takings yesterday. We were open 4 to 11. So, uh, I make that 7 hours. So, in 7 hours of opening, we managed to take uh, £1,018. So, of that £1,018, we have to minus 20%. VAT because this was all on wet sales the restaurant isn't open uh, which comes to 203 framing pounds 60 which then leaves us uh, 814 pounds and 40 pence takings and there we have it so looking at last year's figures kind of pointless because we were obviously uh, working under these restrictions that we've got now and we also uh, didn't have the kitchen open which is uh, had the kitchen open which uh, would throw off the figures so I've taken some 2019 figures where we actually made a small loss over the year because obviously we were making the improvements to the pub we'd only been in this place for a year and we were setting up the kitchen at the time um, so money was going out the door faster than it was coming in during that period but to give you an idea of what we need to make to make a profit some little numbers are pulled from last year's profit and loss so our cost of sales is around 52% for wet sales so we can immediately take 52% of this number off and then we've also got our wage bill last year or 2019-2020 our wages per day came to 100 97 pounds and we now have slightly higher wage costs because we need to run around serving people drinks at tables instead of them coming to the bar so we've got a couple of extra waiting staff on that we wouldn't necessarily have and then also we've got our overheads <laughs> per day I broke this down into per day and that is including any finance that we had out um, in the past couple of years so we had the casks and the kegs were on finance on asset finance the seller cooler was on asset finance we had a 15,000 pound loan to start the kitchen and we also borrowed £10,000 off of a friend to open up the new brew shed, this place, from next door. So I could say that that is going to throw off this figure, which is £109 per day. But we now don't have those overheads anymore. This year, the finance comes to a close in June for all the assets that we have. We still have to pay the rest of the £15,000 kitchen loan back to the bank. But now we also have a £50,000 bounce back loan. Which is, this is the killer, £833 a month. So that now has to be factored into this figure here. So let me just do a little bit of a calculation and we'll see if we've turned a profit or not yesterday. Right, let's run this down and you'll see where we stand. So our cost of sales at 52% comes to £423, which then leaves us £319 left in the pot from yesterday's takings. The wages per day 
we're going to have to remove from that. 197 from 319 is 194. And then from that, we've got to take out our overheads of £109, which leaves us £85 left to play with. And then we've got this £833 a month. So if we divide that over 28 days, which is being generous here, you've got to remember we're only open five days a week under these restrictions. So I am being generous with these figures. That's £29 a month, so 85 quid minus 29 gives us a grand total of £56 operating profit. And that's what we've got from the first day's opening under these restrictions. Now, that's a very, very small number in comparison to that figure there, turnover, £1,018. And you might think, well, what on earth are you doing it for? And I do think that as well. But even though it's a very small number, and it'll get smaller as well as we go on, that was probably a busy day last night because it was our first day opening. I imagine we're going to have quiet Wednesdays and Thursdays as we move forwards for the next two or three weeks. So the lifting of these restrictions where we can have people indoors and people mixing outside without seated restrictions is absolutely crucial to ensure that this business stays financially viable. It's able to prop itself up. It's able to meet its creditors and pay back these bounce back loans, which we were forced by the government to take out because they didn't give us enough financial support to survive without them. So this is a burden on our backs now, which didn't necessarily need to be there. Um, you know, it's one of those things. It's gonna take us a, quite a few years to pay this back, six years to pay that 50,000 pound back. And interest is started on that loan figure as well in June. So 50K plus interest over six years. And 56 pound profit at the end of it, you know, it doesn't take much, does it? Or if one of these fridges breaks down, or if the till system goes under, you know? What about if the cellar cooler breaks, or one of the line coolers for the pumps goes down? It doesn't go very far. What if somebody smashes a window, and we've got to replace the glass in the window? £56 doesn't go far, and it's not much of a contingency fund in the pot. But... I am grateful on the plus side that we did in fact make a profit last night and moving forwards into May and then into June we're going to see that figure climbing on a monthly basis hopefully until we are back to where we were pre-pandemic. Anyway, thought I'd give you a bit of an insight boys and girls into the financials of running a small business and give you kind of some idea what we're up against. These are the things that I have to think about on a daily basis. I can't just uh, concentrate on making beer or fulfilling internet orders or carrying out all the maintenance that we have to do regularly in both the pub and the brewery. Uh, there's always in the back of your mind that financial aspect of running a small business and it keeps you on your toes. So I couldn't get in here quick enough this morning just to make sure that opening just the outdoor area was in fact worth it. Thank God it was. So I hope I've not uh, bored you to death with that. I'm sure a lot of you guys who've been following me long enough now will find that a fascinating insight. And I, I think it's something as well that most other small business owners are reluctant to share um, because a lot of people see this as private information, and I do as well. But uh, this is just a snapshot in time of what we've done uh, yesterday. And it gives you all an idea as to how we make it work, I suppose. Right, time to move away from this now. And we need to just have a quick walk around the place, make sure everything's working correctly. And then I'm going to go into the brewery and I'm going to start planning next week where we're going to be making some beer, stocking up 
on all of our core range beers. I'll be making some more vacant gesture. I'll be making some more proof of concept. I'll be making some more best bitter. But what I want to do is start making some new beers as well. So I might have a play around with some recipes either today or this evening. But by the end of play, I'd like to have a brew plan in place for next week. Oh, well, I'm going to have to stop meeting in these suspicious circumstances. So, a quick walk around. I've noticed this LED. I can't see if you can pick that up on the camera. It's flickering. So we're going to change that one out. This one's just about giving up the ghost look. There's barely any light coming out of that bad boy. So we've got a couple of light bulbs to change. Day one, I'm changing light bulbs already. Everything in the ladies seems to be all right. No floating voters in there, which is a good thing. Yeah, all looking good. All looking good, just apart from dropping the toilet seats and picking up any bits of tissue, which we'll let the staff do when they get in. I'm not doing that today. But all looking pretty good. In here, let's flick on the lights. Looks like we've got a bulb on its way out there as well, but it's still working. Kind of makes it moody, I guess. Um, let's have a look. Yeah, it should be a bit brighter than that, realistically. Let's change him out. We'll pull that down, so there's another one to change there. So that's three LED down lights that I'm gonna have to pop out. But that's it, downstairs. All looks good in the hood. So, not too much work to be done. Well, I've done quite a bit actually this morning. We've been uh, up there. Looks a little dark on the screen, hang on a sec. I've been on the roof, yes. So, there were a couple of ridge caps that I left in this box gutter up here. Just until I'd put a piece of timber up on this side there, you see that bit of timber that I've screwed on? Um, well, some bloody pigeons start making a nest under the ridge caps that I'd left there, so I thought I'd better get that job done. So I've been up and we've pretty much finished all of the work on the roof now. I don't think I'll be going back up for a while. There are still a few nails or screws, tech screws to run in along that edge, but I can't find the rafter on the other side, I need to measure it and everything else. And well, I wasn't in the mood today, so it didn't get done. What have we done though? Well, we've rearranged the beer garden to fit a few more tables in, which will cater for singles and doubles. So we can get a couple more people in there, in terms of well, people who want to sit on their own, essentially. And we've also made a little bit of an adjustment on the bottom of these tables because they were rocking. It's all right, I'm filming you. <laughs> so this will stop these tables rocking a little bit. It doesn't exactly look the neatest job in the world, but it saves, it, saves us having a couple of pieces of brick sat under the edge of the tables, which looked a little bit, a little bit daft. Have you got your pizza table out? Yeah, wherever you like. Come and get your pizzas in the brew shed, limited period only. <laughs> so we managed to, just to stick a few, few single tables in front of the canal. So if people want to come in on their own, they can sit here, enjoy the view. And uh, not take up a big table, which is mainly catered for sixes and eights. Looks like they're cutting the grass down the canal somewhere as well. Uh, we're off, aren't we, Abs? Away at three, opening at four. Oh, so, ladies and gents, we are home. So, as you can see in the corner there, it's approaching 20 to 8. And, uh, well, I'm just having a little bit of a moment thinking about what beers we're going to be brewing. And I've kind of got in my mind. I want to do some fruit sours. 
So I've been looking for certain things here on my Murphy's portal and I've been looking at the Wild Brew Philly Sour, the Voss Kavir Kale and some Verdant Yeast all in 500 gram packs. I'm contemplating picking these up and in combination with picking up a couple of let's go maybe oh it's gonna have to be off the basket I guess maybe with a couple of these bad boys what do you think so we can run these off the pilot kit so I can start making some raspberry uh, sours experimenting a little bit with the Kavir Kales before investing heavily in brewing a 500 litre batch which is what the pilot kit is for anyway and uh, I know this has turned this vlog into a little bit of a all over the place kind of thing but this is tends to be how my days go so I've been looking at fruit purees There we go. So we've got Trade Solutions is one of them that I've looked at already. I'm trying to think of the one that I searched for earlier on this afternoon out in Sheffield. And they did the one kilogram bags. Which were really quite expensive. But conveniently they had a website where I could order directly from. I can't find it now, can I? Anyway, these guys have a fruit puree and they're available uh, by the kilo. Not the cheapest in the world, but by the kilo. About eight pounds some at a kilo. And alternatively, if I was going to be buying uh, for brewing on the large kit then I would have to definitely buy 20 kilo bagging boxes or kind of thing minimum for the fruit purees which means once opened they are compromised because they are aseptically sealed and uh, they're expensive so I don't want to go ahead and brew 500 litre batch of a raspberry sour beer and it turned out wrong when I spent so much money on it so I'm playing with the idea of firing the pilot kit up in the next fortnight ordering in the equipment that I need and doing a batch of uh, sour beers on a pilot kit on the pilot kit before we ramp it up what do you think now, I'm not going to bore you too long with it because the evening's getting on and the video's getting along. So let me know in the comments how, how you do it. But I'm keen, I'm keen to get started on playing around with fruit just to uh, broaden the range of beers that we have available. And I'd like also to put these in can as well. So it's something to think about, isn't it? Let me know what yeast you'd use, where would you buy it from? Obviously I'd like to get it in 600 gram packs if possible, that's 500 shall I say. Where do you get your fruit puree from? I think we can get the like raspberry puree down to about 250 a kilo. This place in Sheffield charging 8 quid a kilo. I'm happy to pay £8 a kilo if I'm ordering 4 or 5 kilos just for an experimental batch. But certainly not when I scale it up commercially. Let me know your thoughts, give me some suggestions. Anyway, boys and girls, that's that. Oh, look at the white balance change immediately. The sun's about to go down on the back garden. Like I say, it's nearly eight o'clock. The grass is coming on like really well, as is my coriander. And that's where I'll leave the vlog. We'll see you on the next one, boys and girls. Cheers.